All right, what's up guys? Mr. Weiss here, back at it again with some notes about gravity. So the first thing we wanna talk about is how do we calculate force gravity? Well, some of you might be thinking to yourselves, Mr. Weiss, we already did these notes. We know how to calculate force gravity. It's just force gravity equals mass times gravity. And you would be partly correct because there's actually two ways to calculate force gravity. We talked about the easy and the simple way, and we'll explain when it works. And that's the force gravity equals mass times gravity way. And this actually only works under certain circumstances. And those circumstances are going to be when we are near the surface of the Earth. And the other issue with this equation is that because it relies on these two variables, mass of our object and gravity, as in the gravitational pull, of whatever object is supplying that gravity, we're going to need to know what that acceleration due to gravity is. And luckily, these are values that we can find online, like the gravitational pull of the Earth, we know is roughly around 9.8, the gravitational pull of the Moon, so on and so forth. But we did start to see towards the end of our forces unit that the gravitational pull of the Earth is not always the same everywhere on the Earth. Like if we're higher up on the earth, like on the top of a mountain, it's actually slightly smaller than it would be on the surface of the earth. And if we were all the way down at the bottom of the ocean, it would actually be a little bit bigger than it would on the surface of the earth. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a sec. So what I have over here is the universal law of gravity. And the reason why it's called the universal law of gravity is because this is going to work everywhere, okay? So our tiny equation, the Fg equals mass times gravity, that's only going to work when we're near the center of the Earth, but this big monster equation is going to work anywhere in the universe, anywhere that we have two masses and a distance between those masses. So let's go ahead and look at each of these variables really quickly. We see that we have F, which represents force of gravity, nothing new there. Then we have a big G here. Big G is going to represent the gravitational constant. Because it's a constant, it's going to be that exact same value every time. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. I recommend you just store this number into your calculator for the letter G, so that whenever we need to do this, you just have to hit alpha G and that number will be there. I can show you guys how to do that at the end of these notes as well. Big M stands for the mass of one of our objects, and little m is going to be the mass of our other object. You might see it sometimes as big M, little m, or M1, M2, same thing. It doesn't matter which object we assign to be which M. The reason being is that they're both being multiplied against each other, and they're both to the same power. So it doesn't matter if we put uh, the Earth as one object and a person as the other object, or the Moon as the first object and the Earth as the second object. Lastly, we have R, and R is going to be the distance between the two objects' centers. This is very important because a lot of people mess this up. The key word here is center, okay? And it's not really a big issue when we're talking about like smaller objects like say you and me, because we're pretty small in relation to the Earth, but if we're talking about the Earth and the Moon, the surface of the Earth is very far away from the center of the Earth. Same with the surface of the Moon being very far away from the center of the Moon. That distance from the center to the surface is huge, so it's going to play a big impact in calculating force of gravity. So if we forget to take center to center, we're going to end up with a totally different value and it's going to be incorrect. So we need to remember that when we're calculating the force of gravity this way, we need to take the centers of those objects and calculate the distance from those centers. Here we just got a little gif of a guy flying off in space. Yikes. All right, let's look a little bit deeper into this universal law of gravity. And if we do that, we're gonna see that the force of gravity is actually directly proportional to the mass. And all this means is just that as mass increases, the force of gravity is going to increase. And we saw that before with our tiny equation as well, how if we increase the mass, our weight got bigger. 
The other thing we're going to notice, and that's just for this equation, is that the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two masses. So I know that sounds like a lot, but really all I'm saying here is that as we increase that distance, our force of gravity is going to decrease. And it's not just going to decrease at a one-to-one -one rate, it's going to decrease at a squared rate. So for instance, two times the distance is going to be one-fourth the force of gravity. And again, here's our equation over here that we've talked about on the last slide, and we can just see that. We see that mass is on top, so as the top of our fraction gets bigger, force gravity is going to get bigger. We can see that the distance is on the bottom, so as distance gets bigger, that denominator is getting bigger and bigger. So if the denominator is getting bigger, our force gravity is going to get smaller. And we also see that distance is not just distance, it's distance squared. So it's going to get smaller at a squared rate. So let's make sure that these equations actually work. So let's do one of these the old fashioned way, just for good old sake. We have our force gravity equals mass times gravity. And let's say I want to find my weight on Earth. Well, weight, if you remember, is Fg. My mass is 70 kilograms, that's something I would give you. And the gravitational pull of the Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So to figure this out, we just take those two numbers and multiply them together. We find out that my weight on Earth is 686 newtons. Now let's use the big old equation. So we got force gravity equals big G times M1 times M2 all over R squared. What's force gravity? Again, we don't know what that is. What's big G? We do know what that is. That is a constant value that will always be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. That E just stands for times 10. M1 is 70 kilograms, and M2 is going to be the mass of the Earth, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. It would not have mattered if I said M1 was the mass of the Earth and M2 was my mass. Either way is fine. And then lastly, R. R is going to be the distance from me to the center of the Earth. And that's going to be 6.371 times 10 to the six meters. These are values that I would obviously give you. I would give you a whole sheet or values that you could easily Google. I'll have a sheet for you guys with all this information for the Earth and various planets as well. So if we take all of this information and shove it inside our equation, this is what we get. I recommend that you take your calculator right now and you do this because a lot of people make mistakes here. They can get to this part, but they mess up the calculator. Make sure that you put things in parentheses. Wherever you see parentheses, put a parenthesis. Okay. Once you solve, you should get right around 690 newtons. So we got 686 the old fashioned way and 690 this way. I would say that both of these equations work pretty well. Success. Awesome. We did a great job. So let's talk about little g in this equation, our old fashioned equation. And we want to figure out where is this little g really coming from? Well, we know that force gravity is equal to mass times little g, but we also know that force gravity is equal to our new equation, and that's big G times m1 times m2 over r squared. So little g is the gravitational pull of that object, and in other words, it's the gravitational field strength. And we know that gravitational field strengths are directly proportional to the mass, meaning the bigger the mass, the more pull it's going to have, the greater that gravitational field strength. But we also know that if that object is far away from another object, it's going to have a small field strength because the distance is going to matter. So think about how the sun is so much bigger than the earth, but we aren't flying off the center of the earth and flying towards the sun, right? We're not flying into space right now. We're stuck on the surface of the earth. And the reason being is that we are very close to the surface of the Earth. We can see right here that that gravitational field strength can be found by taking our gravitational constant G, multiplying it by the mass of our object. So in this case, it would be the Earth 
and dividing by the distance to the center of that object, in this case, the radius of the Earth. All right, things we need to know about gravity. The more mass, the bigger the force of gravity between objects. We just said this on the last slide, makes perfect sense. Bigger objects are going to have bigger gravitational pull, which means that we're going to have a bigger force of gravity. The further away those objects are, the smaller the force of gravity. And we saw that in our equation because the distance is on the bottom, meaning that as the bottom of that fraction gets bigger and bigger, our force of gravity is going to get smaller and smaller. There is a force of gravity between every single object that has mass and every other object that has mass. It doesn't matter how small these objects are, as long as they have mass, there is a gravitational pull between them. Both objects feel that same magnitude of force. That's really important, right? We said Newton's third law, equal force, opposite direction. So when it comes to gravitational force, if our two objects are the Earth and the Sun, the sun is pulling on the earth with some gravitational force and the earth is pulling back on the sun with the same magnitude of that force. All right, let's do a quick review now. The universal law of gravity works everywhere. That's why we call it the universal law of gravity. R is the distance between the centers of those objects. So it has to be the center, not the surface, okay? So please remember center, center, center. And when talking about gravitational poles between planets, you would first need to find the distance between those planets and then add their radiuses to that distance. Again, the reason being that it's the centers of those objects and planets are spheres, so that's why we need to take the radius, because the radius is from the center to the surface. There is a gravitational pull between every two objects with mass. Therefore, you are gravitationally attracted to your worst enemy. What? And gravitationally attracted to that crush of yours. More mass equals more force gravity. The bigger the distance though, the smaller the force gravity. This is why long distance relationships don't work. You lose attraction over distances. Take it from me guys, when you go to college and you do those uh, study abroad programs, if you find yourself in a long distance relationship, just remember, it's not gonna work out. And the reason being, it's just science. Lastly, let's talk about some common mistakes and misconceptions. Some people forget that gravity causes attraction between all objects. I've said this about three times in this note section, but you got to remember that it's all objects. If it has mass, there is a force gravity. People forget that force gravity is inversely proportional to R squared. That just means as distance increases, the force of gravity decreases by a factor of one over R squared. Again, as distance increases, gravity decreases. As distance decreases, gravity increases. Sometimes people forget that R is the distance between the centers of mass. You need to measure that distance from the centers, not their surfaces. And there you go. We have made it to the end of our gravity notes. So please make sure that you remember what we just talked about. Key takeaways is that the universal law of gravity helps us figure out the force of gravity between two objects with mass. Another key takeaway is that as the mass increases, force of gravity increases, and as the distance gets bigger, so as these objects get further and further away, their force of gravity gets smaller and smaller. 
All right, guys, so I said I'd go ahead and show you how to store the letter G in your calculator. And the way we do that is just by typing in our number. So 6.67 times 10, so E negative 11. And then we can hit enter if we want, it doesn't matter. But the next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is hit this still button right here. It's gonna bring up that arrow. And then we're gonna hit alpha. And then we're gonna go ahead and find the letter G, that's this tan key. Now we're gonna press enter. And now we've stored the letter G as 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So now when we do one of our equations, we can just go ahead and type alpha G, and that will pull up that value for us. So that value will always be there now, and it will make solving these equations a lot easier. So if I just were to solve one really quick, I would say G times mass one, let's say my mass one is 10, times mass two, let's say mass two is 20, all divided by my distance from the center of one mass to the center of the other mass, let's say that that's five squared. And just like that, there I go, there's my force of gravity, piece of cake. Here's a little clip I have, I think it's pretty funny. I'll go ahead and show you guys. See this? Yeah. You know what it is? Uh, duh, it's an apple. Good, good, good. All right, watch this. What the hell? What is this? What is this, some kind of gag? Uh, no, that's orbit. Huh? You have your own gravitational pull. Oh, that's a bunch of crap. Now back to the Three Stooges. <laughs> oh. 